look like a blackjack player. A handsome blackjack player. Yes. I do beg your pardon. What do you want, Marston? My family. I've done what you asked. <laughs> no, you haven't. This is the land of opportunity, and I gave you the opportunity to save your family, and you failed. How could I possibly reward you? Marston, you're a public menace. We should have had you killed. I wish you had. <laughs> but since you didn't, where's my family? Oh, spare me the noble savage fall on the sword tripe, will you? Oh, boy, it's nauseating. You don't wish to be dead. You're an insignificant creature desperately clinging on to life like the rest of the scum in this town. Yeah, I know, it's tough. You like Dutch. He's a charming fellow. He makes sense. He's like one of those nature writers from back east. Only he takes things a tiny little step too far. Rather than just loving the flowers and the animals and the harmony between man and beast, <laughs> he shoots people in the head for money and disagreeing with them. He's a goddamn killer. Now, I'm not a great intellect, but the metaphysical leap from admiring the flower to shooting a man in the head because he doesn't like the flower is a leap too far. So, I know it's easy. <laughs> you see, we, me and Archer, we're the bad guys. We enforce the rules. Now, while the rules may not be perfect, they're really not so bad. Exactly. What's the alternative? Yeah. See, I'll tell you what the alternative is. It's not complicated. It's about one man and his gun versus another man. <laughs> sure. Civilization may be dull, but the alternative, Mr. Marston, is hell. And the way you enforce this civilization, this freedom for men to like or not like flowers, or whatever in God's name you were just talking about, is to kidnap a man's wife and son? Well, I know there's contradictions. I'm not going to lie to you. <laughs> yeah, as I said, I'm not a great intellect. Now, after the debacle with the army and the bank, we have to put Mr. Vanderlyn to rest ourselves. Will you help us? 
Do I have any choice? Now that you mention it, no. Then what was that pretty speech in aid of? I don't rightly know, but it sure felt good saying it. <laughs> Shall we, Mr. Marston? Let's go. trigger until we get out of Blackwater. have no equal. We have made incredible progress the past few years. Is that what you call this it? This isn't much more than a simple prototype. You should see what they're working on in Virginia. Soon there will be no war we can't win. The Army has made camp a little way outside town. They put word out a large cache of ammunition and food is stored there. Vandalin's gang needs constant supplies, so that should be enough to draw them in. No mistakes this time. You hear me, Marston? I thought you were talking to Fordham. I didn't tell you to open fire. Here they come! Look, they brought the machine gun. What's the word, Captain? We spotted one of Dutch's men about an hour ago. I think he took the bait. Let's get in position then. Have your men ready to run him down if you have to. Dismiss! Load weapons and get from the sandbag! Move! Are you ready to finish this, Mr. Marston? I guess so. Everybody stay alert! Let's 
they're off the road. It's gonna be a mess if we have to follow them into the woods. This is insanity! I can hardly hold Just on! Just shut up and drive, Fordham! Get those men behind the rock! Now!
our cavalry! Well, Mr. Marston, it seems like your mentor, Dutch, no longer looks quite so kindly to a student. That man is insane. So it seems. I think we need to get him before sundown. As you say, Captain. Otherwise, he'll be gone again. And what if I say no? <laughs> now, before I shoot you myself, let me just point out the obvious. The one person we have left that can appeal to Mr. Vanderlyn is the last person we know who knows him. Your wife. That won't be necessary. Mr. Ross, Captain, let's go. <clears throat> Mount up, men. Let's move out. Lord above. Come on. So you're the one who's going to kill him? Dutch? Yep, that's what they keep telling me. But if you feel like doing it, please be my guest. Well, this is suicide if you ask me. My scouts have seen that fort of his. I wanted to wait for more men, but them city boys back there weren't having none of it. And you answer to them? Unfortunately, it seems that now we do. They said you was in a gang with this Dutch Vanderlyn. I was once. A long time ago. Don't seem like the kind of fella you want to run with. Unless I completely misjudge your character, of course. When he turned crazy, I left. At least I tried to leave. Till those suits back there came and knocking, threatening to kill my wife and son if I didn't go after him. Strange times we live in, partner. Strange times. It's a funny business. Army, government men, criminals, with all due respect. You're telling me. Too many hands on the tiller, if you ask me. This is how mistakes happen. My boys don't know who's giving the orders no more. Take it from me, mister. When we get up there, it ain't gonna matter. It'll be every man for himself.
I believe Vandalin has built himself a fortress in the mountains. Covering fire! 
man! Move into the village! Take two men with us. The rest will stay here and take care of the wounded. They'll plant charges at the gate. You and I will provide the cover fire. All right, men. Blow that gate open. Get ready to hold off their fire, Marston. Hold them off. We need time to set the explosives. All good. Come down on. a lot of you. We lost one. Keep up the fire. I'm ashamed! 
It's over, John. I ain't leaving here without you. Again, John. Hello, Dutch. We gotta stop meeting like this. Sure. I got a plan, John. You always got a plan, Dutch. This is a good one. I don't doubt it. We can't always fight nature, John. We can't fight change, can't fight gravity, we can't fight nothing. My whole life, all I ever did was fight. Then give up, Dutch. But I can't give up, neither. I can't fight my own nature. That's a paradox, John. You see? And I have to shoot you. When I'm gone, they'll just find another monster. They have to. Because they have to justify their wages. That's their business. Our time has passed. Yeah.
So at the end, you didn't have the guts to shoot him. The man's dead, Ross. Sure. Can I see your gun? Trust me, it looks better in the report that way. Where's my family? Uh, your wife was killed in a prison riot last week. So, <laughs> I'm only joking, dear boy. They were sent back to that Scrabble ranch of yours in Beecher's Hope. They're quite safe and sound. They better be. Thank you, Mr. Marston, for everything. I know this wasn't easy for you, but I have to say, you've done your country proud. Yeah, exactly. See you around, John. Try to stay out of trouble. Come on, Archer. Let's go find somebody else we can annoy. never thought I'd see this day again. You no good hillbilly piece of shit! I thought you was dead! I thought you was dead, John, huh? Where you been? Where you been? You know where I've been, darling. You know! You saw Dutch, didn't you? Yeah, I saw him. And Bill? Yeah, I saw him too. And you didn't go back to him? I left that life. Just as you left yours. How'd they treat you? Oh. I can take care of myself, John. One guard got funny on me one time, but I wasn't so ladylike, and he didn't try it again, nor no one else. How's the boy? Oh, like you, and like me, 
Well, he's like a kid growing up without a father. That ain't fair. What is fair? Well, some trees flourish, others die. Some cattle grow strong, others are taken by wolves. Some men are born rich enough and dumb enough to enjoy their lives. Ain't nothing fair, you know that. We tried to change, I mean, isn't that what you're supposed to do? We did change. And it's over now. Jack! Jack, come here, boy. Hello, sir. Come here. How you been? Coyotes ate all the chickens and poachers took the cattle. I tried, Father. I tried. I know you did, son. I know. And don't you go blaming me, boy. Don't you go blaming me. I ain't blaming no one, old man, but since you're still alive, there's four mouths to feed. And no cattle. That's a nice way to greet somebody. Why don't I get the warm and tender embrace? Consider the fact I ain't put a bullet in you, your embrace, old man. You were supposed to look after the place. I did. Well, I did my best. Thing is, there was too many of them. Uh, I thought you was dead. I wasn't drinking. Hold your excuses until you figured out which one to use. Jack, go get your bags packed, boy. We got work to do. We're leaving in the morning. Go on. Yes, sir. Where are you going? Well, it's getting kind of dark now, but in the morning we've got to go get ourselves some more cattle. We've got friends at McFarland's ranch. It's over in Hennigan's stead who can sell us some. Now, Abigail, I hope you've learned to cook. Yes, didn't I say? Rather than some prison, they actually kept me incarcerated in a cooking school for young ladies. Hello, sir. All right. We should get moving. Yeah. Hey. Jack? I'm feeling fine, sir. We got a decent ride ahead of us. I've never been to Hennigan's stead. How do you know these ranchers? I met them while I was away. The McFarland's are good people. We need folks we can trust right now. Met them how? I was sick and they looked after me. Sick how? You sure got a lot of questions. Well, I don't often get a chance to ask them. Was it a gentleman's complaint? What do they call it? The morning drip? Good God, boy, no! Where do you learn these things? Uncle told me about it. Well, he'd know, the dirty old fool. No, I just got weak for a while. Acted foolishly, got in trouble. Guess I was a little out of practice. Hello. Hello, sir. Hey, Paul. What? Where were you all that time? Where'd you go? What'd your mother tell you? She said it was some kind of important government business. 
That's about right. Some people thought I owed them some favor. Why did they take us away? They thought it wasn't safe for you here by yourself. Those men harm you? I oh, know, they're okay. Some of them even told me stories. I think I'd like to be a government man one day. Or, or a politician. I'd rather you chose an honest profession. Ah! Like you, you mean? I know I ain't been the best father, Jack. I made some bad choices. But all that, that life, it's over now. Oh, was it something to do with Mr. Dutch and Bill? Why you went away? Who told you that? I kept hearing people say their names. Th that's all. Yeah, I caught up with Bill and Dutch. We had some old business needed settling. Where are they now? They're gone, son. We won't be seeing them again. They were angry at you, weren't they? That's why we had to leave. They was just good men who turned bad. I'll explain it to you one day. And what does that make you? I guess I'm a, a bad man who tried to be a good father. I don't know. Every man has a right to change. A chance of forgiveness. Ain't that what the good book says? You've never read me the good book, sir. Well, I imagine that's what it says. There's the ranch. Come on, let's see if we can find Mr. McFarland. Easy. John Marston. There's a face I thought I'd never see again. Some of our public servants in Blackwater sent you back on another homicidal errand to protect and save us from Lord only knows what. Thankfully not, sir. I was hoping you might still be able to sell me some cattle. My boy, it would be a pleasure. Bonnie's out to crown now. She'll be more than happy to help you. <laughs> Take care now, Mr. McFarland. Good luck. All right, Jack. You're gonna have an important... Good Lord, do my eyes deceive me. A devil walks among us. I said I'd be back when this was all over, Miss McFarland. After the barn fire, you remember? Of course I remember. I just didn't believe a word of it. So, you've come for some cattle? Yeah, I'm finally starting up my farm again. Or trying to, at least. You'll be fine. You've been taught well. Come on, then. Come on. Slow up.
I'll give you a hand to get them moving. So, what happened? Last I heard you were headed for some exotic escapade in Mexico. It's a long story. Too long to tell without a drink in my hand. Back to the riddles, I see. And Mr. Williamson? Let's just say Bill and I settled our differences. So, is this your boy? Yeah! Say hello to Miss McFarland, Jack! Hello? Ah, the arrogance of youth. He gets a little fur on his lip and he thinks he knows best all of a sudden. <laughs> Must take after his father. Come on! How's your wife? She's well, I think. We haven't had much time to talk yet. Well, I'm glad you're back together again. It's gonna take some time. Easy We've now. all been through a lot. Looks like you got him under control. I best get back to Paul. Nice to see you again, Miss McFarland. And thanks for oh, everything. Be funny, you don't. Jack, we need to move him across the river. Come on! Whoa! 
Hold up, Jack. This don't look right. I'll deal with this. Stay with the herd, Jack. Come on, come on. You almost got me. That's all up. Jack, wait there, I'm coming. You all right? You're not hurt, are you? No, I'm fine, I'm fine. I, I wasn't scared, honest. Sorry you had to see that, son. Those men won't be stealing from anybody else. All right, let's round up the stragglers and get moving. There you go. Let's go. Towards home. I know where I'm going, Paul. Slow it up now. Easy. 
together, you dumb animals! Let's go! I know where I'm going, Paul. No stopping. Let's go. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Let's go. Let's go. Yeah. Get a move on. Of you, son. Thanks, Paul. That's got to be more exciting Careful. than those books of yours. Oh, uh, sure. If nearly getting killed is your idea of exciting. Nice work, son. We made it. You did real good out there. Go on. Hit your horse and wait for me by the stable. That's a fine herd we got ourselves. So we're rancher? Did a good job, son. Nice shooting. Thanks, Paul. Make a rancher of you yet. <laughs> 